everyone. It's time to stop, drop, and art. It's been so cold outside lately, hasn't it? It has here where I live. It's been like icy and frosty. So today we're going to do a project that has to do with cold, icy lakes and snowy mountains and a forest. I have a very large piece of paper for my project, but you could use a smaller one. Size doesn't matter too much. Maybe half this size would be good. A uh, watercolor paper would be best, but this is mixed media paper actually. So I'm just using mixed media paper and we're going to need paints. I'm going to use acrylic paints. Watercolor paints won't work for this. You'll need to use tempura or acrylic paints and you'll need a Sharpie and a paintbrush and some water and paper towels. And I think that's about it. So the first thing we're going to do is put our paper vertically. So see, I have it laid on my table the tall way, not horizontally, vertically. And then we're going to fold it in half. So do your best. I had something drawn on the other side of this, but that's that's just a mistake, so pay no attention to that. Okay, do your best to line up the edges and crease it in the middle. Then open your paper back up. Got a nice crease going all the way through the middle. And the reason I need that crease is that is the water line. So there's a nice icy lake in the mountains, right here, we're drawing the water line of the lake. And then growing along the edge of the lake are some trees. I'm going to make very simple trees. They're just triangles. I'll make two there and make one back here that's a little smaller. Maybe put a skinnier one here. Some are short, some are taller. Maybe one goes off the page. All right, those are my trees. Basically just triangle shapes. Some are wider, some are thinner. Now we're going to do mountains behind our trees and we don't want the mountains to look just like our trees. So we don't want our mountains to be really pointy or they're just gonna look like bigger trees. Let's make our mountains a little more rounded on top. And let's start with one big mountain right in the middle. So let's have a mountain that goes like this. And then maybe a mountain here and a mountain here. Something like that. That's all we need to draw our line where our lake is, our trees, and our mountains. Now we're gonna do something really cool. We're gonna paint our trees and our mountains and then fold the paper in half and press it down and then we'll have a reflection of those trees and mountains in our water. But we have to do it just a little bit at a time because the paint dries quickly. So we have to do it in certain steps. So you'll need to follow the steps in order for this to work. So I'm going to start with my, I like to put foil on a clipboard um, sometimes for an ease for a palette for my paint because I figure most people have that at home. Maybe not everybody has a palette, but everybody probably has a clipboard or a piece of cardboard and some foil and you could make a palette, paint palette out of that. So I'm going to start with some blue and I'm going to start by painting the lake. So I'm going to want a big brush for that because it's a lot to paint. I'm going to get my brush wet, get some paint, and it's going to go back and forth. When I'm stroking the paint, I'm just going back and forth in long, long brush strokes right up to the edge of the water, right up to the edge of those trees. Now you might want to put some 
newspaper or something underneath of your painting. I didn't do that. And if I go right to the edge, I'm probably going to get paint on the table. But this is my painting table, so it doesn't matter too much. If you're using your dining room table, you might want to put newspaper underneath. And get a little more. We want to keep it wet. Then the thinner the paper, the more likely it is to uh, get kind of waterlogged, but it'll be okay when it dries. Getting a little more water on there to stretch my paint and make it brush on more smoothly. Okay. And let's get that edge. I still want those strokes all going Rust. So if I have to do some strokes up and down, then I go back over them to make them all going across. So all my strokes are going across, like it looks more like water. Great. All right, now I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm going to paint just two of my trees. So trees are going to be green. Getting some green paint. And I'm dipping my brush in some water. And then I'm dipping it in my green paint, getting it on my brush. And then I'm going to paint that paint on there. And it dries quickly, like I said, which is why I'm only gonna do two at first. I probably want to put quite a bit of paint on there because I'm going to fold it in half and I want that paint to leave a mark on my lake. So let's see if it's going to work. Let's fold it in half. I did two trees. I'm folding it in half right at the crease. I'm going to press down on top of those trees. Just where I just painted those trees. Okay, now let's take it. Let's. Oh, look at that. It left a reflection. It looks like a reflection. Now, I see a problem. The blue from the lake has also pressed over. So we need to let that blue dry a little bit more before we do the rest of our trees. Let's let our lake dry, and then we'll do the rest of our trees. All right, I waited a little while, and now I think my blue is pretty dry in the lake, so I'm getting my brush wet. And I'm getting some green paint. I'm going to do two more trees. So I'm going to paint this tree. This brush can be turned on its side to go to make a point because it's a thin brush. It's wide, but wide across, but thin this way. So it's kind of a square brush. So I can get into the corner like that. And I can also make big wide strokes. Okay, and we'll do this one right in the middle here. Go up to the point and down this way. All right, we're going to try it again. I'm going to fold it in half and press down where I just painted those two trees. Maybe rub around in circles a little bit. Let's open it up. Oh, it worked. Look at that. All right, let's do our other trees. Up. thick paint on there. If your trees, if it's not working for you, you probably need to add more green paint to your trees and try it again. Maybe you just don't have enough paint. And get that tree right there on the edge. All right, we're gonna fold it over and rub. 
kind of making a mess here, aren't I? Art is usually messy. I like I like messy art. Ooh, that looks really cool. Great. We have a reflection of the trees, but we also want a reflection of the mountains. So I think we don't want to make the mountains the same blue as the lake. That won't work. So I'm going to take the blue that I used for the lake and I'm going to add just a little bit of red. Do you know what color that's going to make? Well, it should make purple. So I'm just going to mix that up. And it's kind of a blue, uh, just a darker blue, a little bit, a little bit purple, but I don't want it to be super purple. I just want it to be darker than the lake. So I have achieved that. So I'm going to use my big brush. Oh, I forgot I wanted to put snow on top of the mountains. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to go back and fix that. And leave a little space for snow. So, but for now, maybe we can get some of that off. I'll go back when that dries and I'll put snow over top of it. So for now, probably, I probably shouldn't do all the mountains at once, huh? That's probably not gonna work. I'll probably just do one mountain at a time. And this is really a big mountain, so maybe I'll just do that center part. I'm gonna fold it over. And rub where I painted. And, ooh, look at that. Now, later we can go back and um, do a little touch up if we need to. But right now, I'm just doing the, the purple part of the mountain. We'll add the snowy white part after we get the purple part done. Okay, did that mountain, folding, rubbing. And I can see it. Now you don't have to see it perfectly because when you look at a reflection in a lake, sometimes it's just the colors of the things that are being reflected. It's not a perfect outline of what you're seeing, usually. So if we just have some colors from the mountains, that's okay. We don't need necessarily to have... Oh, I forgot this part of the mountain, didn't I? We don't need to see them the outlines really clearly. We just want to see some of the mountains, some of the color. Rubbing the whole thing, opening it up. Yeah, okay. Looking pretty cool. I think when we put those white caps of snow on top of our mountains, that's going to really help. But I don't want to use that same brush unless I clean it really, really good first because it's gonna be purple and I don't want my snow to be purple. So let's see, I'm washing, washing. I think I need to rinse it a little bit more and dry it off on my towel. Okay, I'm gonna get some white. So I'm gonna put some white on my palette. Take my big brush, dip it in the white. some snow on top of those mountains. That's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna fold that over and rub the snow very carefully, I don't want to slide around. Rubbing it on. Oh, wow, that makes my reflection of my mountains look much more like mountains, doesn't it? That's terrific. Hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure you can see my entire paper. Great, this is going really well. Okay. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna use some light blue now for the sky. If you don't have light blue, you could add some white to the blue that you used for the lake and make your own light blue. But I'm making some light blue, rinsing my big brush, getting it all clean, getting some light blue, and I gotta set my palette down here. And I'm gonna carefully paint the sky. 
I'm just gonna do brush strokes that go across the sky. I think I need some more paint. I'm gonna go around my mountain. I don't wanna paint my snow. I am trying to keep the strokes going mostly across horizontally. Get some more paint on my brush. Go carefully around the mountain and then smooth out that stroke with some horizontal brush strokes. Going around this mountain and then smoothing it with some horizontal strokes. And I'm not going to paint the sky in the water. I'm just gonna leave it the color of the water. But there we have it. And now if you want to put a little bit of cloud in your sky, you could take a little white, and just do a few little dashes like that. You don't wanna cover your whole sky, but maybe a few little horizontal dashes to look like clouds up there around the tops of the mountains. And I suppose if you wanted to, you could fold it again. No, because our sky is still wet. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll just put a little bit of a reflection down here of the clouds with a paintbrush. If you wait for your sky to dry and then you put clouds in, that might be a better way to get that reflection in the water because then you could fold it. But I'm cheating with the clouds, just putting them in with a brush, a dry brush. Great, I think that's it. So now we have a beautiful painting of a nice peaceful lake reflected in the water. Wait a minute. Which side is the reflection and which side is the actual trees? Sometimes when you're looking in a lake, it's hard to tell on a really clear, clear day. Sometimes it's like a mirror image. You could do this with other things. You could do it with a city, maybe next to a lake, or maybe a city at night with light, lighted windows. Or maybe you could just try it with one big tree with lots of branches reflected in a lake. There's lots of cool things you could do with this project. So I hope you had fun and I hope you stay warm, wear your coat when you go outside and your mittens and stay safe.